we want to move patients from first line to second and hopefully third line treatment to optimize um, uh, exposure to all active agents, the choice of second line therapy depends on what we did in first line. For instance, if we start with Folfox-based therapy, we normally go to a Folfiri-based treatment and second-line treatment, or vice versa. And if we start with, start with bevacizumab based on the fact that we had a RAS mutant or right-sided cancer, we normally, I think, best data is continuing a VEGF inhibition beyond progression and not necessarily even using an EGF receptor antibody in second line unless there's a need for, let's say, a higher response rate that we can achieve when we add um, panitumab, for instance, to an arenotecan-based regimen. Now then, of course, the experience that patients had with in terms of toxicities and frontline treatment plays a role. Um, we would, for instance, not re-expose patients to oxaplatin-based therapy after a maintenance period if patients had a neurotoxicity or perhaps even persistent neurotoxicity after prior adjuvant therapy. How did they tolerate the fluoroprimidine that they had, likely had in their, uh, this, in their treatment? Um, so these factors play a role in, so into the selection of um, the uh, chemotherapy and biologic agents. Now then there are emerging a data regarding especially BRAV, B6 and B mutant tumors, which are about eight to 10% of patients with metastatic disease. We have clear data that those patients might actually benefit more from a targeted approach with a combination of a BRAF inhibitor EGF septa inhibitor and potentially even a MEK inhibitor. There are very intriguing data that came from randomized cooperative group studies and now from a randomized company sponsored study that those uh, treatment approaches might be better for patients in second and third line treatment than standard chemotherapy, uh, which we previously did. So these 10% of patients, BRAF uh, mutations, need to be treated differently. Similarly, likely in second line or third line treatment, MSR high tumors. Could be, could be exposed to, in, to pembrolizumab or nivolumab-based uh, therapies. Second-line treatment is an important component of treatment in metastatic colorectal cancer, since the continual care of subsequent lines of therapy is essential for prolonging survival, giving a relatively better quality of life to each patient with metastatic colorectal cancer. And in this sequence, even the possibility of doing surgical removal of liver metastasis can, be, can play a role either in a curative intention or for prolonging progression-free survival. In this uh, scenario, the second line options depends a lot on the first line options. Usually in terms of chemotherapy backbone, usually patients that in first line are treated with fulfiri receive in second line for FOX, so from irinotecan to oxaliplatin, whereas the reverse is the situation when first line is for FOX and followed by Fulfiri. In terms of biologic agents, in patients whose disease is RAS mutant, obviously we cannot use anti GFR drugs. And usually in second line, the strategy is sequencing chemotherapy by switching irinotecan to oxaliplatin or vice versa and keeping antiangiogenic drugs, either continuing bevacizumab during progression or uh, replacing bevacizumab with uh, other anti-angiogenic drugs such as aflibercept or ramucirumab. Although the data with ramucirumab and aflibercept are only with fulfiri, and therefore we can use this option for second line only if we did fulfox oxelox in first line. For patients with the RAS, rough well type disease, in which in first line we use the chemotherapy backbone plus uh, bevacizumab, in second line, usually uh, patients have two options, either to continue bevacizumab before, beyond progression by continuing this in combination with alternative chemotherapy, or, and this happens more often in, uh, in several countries, to switch to the alternate chemotherapy plus an anti-GFR monoclonal, either cetuximab or panitumumab. Since we think about our patients, um, uh, uh, treatment options as, on, uh, as a, as a long-term plan, not a short-term plan. So the way I think about it is I want to take those patients through a marathon rather than through a sprint where I exhaust the options and exhaust the patients too. And then, you know, lose uh, the capacity to continue building up uh, options for them. Um, so whatever we do in the first line is important and is not and should not be disconnected from our line of thinking about what should be done in the second, third, or fourth line. If we have a, a right-sided tumor 
and you use Vegf, so bevacizumab in the first line, typically in the second line, you will switch the chemo and you would go to bevacizumab. On the left sided, uh, with the left sided tumor, that's again RAS wild type, BRAF wild type, HER2 non amplified, and assuming again microsatellite stable. For that, for that patient, uh, if we went with a EGFR inhibitor in the first line, then naturally we'll progress to a VEGF inhibitor, bevacizumab in the second line. If you started with fulfiri plus, say, cetuximab in the first line, you can actually continue the fulfiri. Um, uh, I'm sorry, you switch to Folfox and then uh, switch the biologic to bevacizumab. Uh, if you uh, started with a Folfox penetumumab in the first line, then your second line would be Folfiri plus bevacizumab. On the other hand, if you start with bevacizumab and Folfiri, you can actually continue with the Folfiri and just add the EGFR inhibitor. Uh, if you started uh, with Folfox plus bevacizumab in the first line, um, then you switch the chemotherapeutic to Folfiri and then you, do, uh, you, you, you go with the EGFR inhibitor. Um, the reason why I don't continue bevacizumab from first line to second line in that patient that's perfect for EGFR inhibitors is because I really don't want to wait too long before I introduce the effects of the EGFR inhibition. Now, some may argue that since EGFRs or EGFR inhibitors keep their activity across lines of therapy, regardless of line of therapy, then perhaps you could still push it further down I think you know some the data from CLGB eight zero four zero five and Fire three are intriguing enough to actually convince me that I cannot wait beyond second line to use any GFR inhibitor, and I prefer not to, uh, in terms of planning for overall survival. For most of my patients, though, the first line, preferred first line remains chemotherapy plus bevacizumab. So and and usually Folfiri plus bevacizumab because I like to keep that backbone, and then introduce the EGFR inhibitor in the second line.